Oh, I just realized that my mic was muted. Good morning, hello, and welcome to this date in history, aka TDH. This show is about what happened to date throughout the annals of recorded history. Join us as we delve into yesteryear, not only for interesting and important happenings, but to possibly even answer questions you do not know you have. The source of this information come from the smart device applicant, well, not even that, uh, from the website on the state.com. Still used to crediting the smart device applications that I haven't used in well over two years? Question mark. Anyway, uh, for links to this source and anything else potentially interesting, please check the underbar in the description below, and all links gathered throughout the show will appear post live stream as usual. Uh, anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and you are you, um, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, person audience, whatever you are out there watching this. Thank you very much for joining us, What, whenever it is, be it live or in the future. Or in the past, whatever you are in that timeline. Anyway, today is uh, Tears' Day, a.k.a. Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. Six days till Christmas, people. Time is clicking down, and you gotta get your stuff done. Get that tree up, get those lights on, get those presents wrapped. If anything involving Christmas applies to you, or if you celebrate Hanukkah, I hope you had a good one. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, whenever that is, I hope you're having a good one. I know the Armenians celebrate Christmas in, like, January. So, uh, so you know, it's holiday season. Have a good one is what I'm saying. Anyway, let's jump into the history today, shall we? Starting us off in the year 324, we have Linicus abdicated his position as Roman Emperor. All right. That's uh, pretty interesting right there. Then, doing a pretty good time jump into 1055, uh, Seljukin under Togril Beg occupied Baghdad. All right, we all know about Baghdad. It's the capital of Iraq. And uh, what a lot of people don't know about Baghdad, though, is that it is also pretty much, like, on where um, Babylon used to be. Like, uh, we, we all know about the uh, whole Hanging Gardens of Babylon and all that stuff, which those might have been somewhere else, but the actual city of Babylon... The ancient city of Babylon is where modern-day uh, Baghdad currently resides. Anyway, moving on up to 1154, King Henry II of England was crowned King of England. Okay, uh, so um, so why do we why do you have the title before? Like, well, now he's King Henry, but but this is when he became King Henry. So Henry II of England became Queen. So Henry Henry Kurtmantle, uh, Henry Fitz Empress. Or Henry Plantagenet. What a name. So, you know what? That's why Henry II went better with him. So all of these other monikers are kind of wonky. Anyway, moving on up to 1487. Opening ceremony of the 6th Great Temple of Tenochtitlan, modern-day Mexico City. Speaking of cities, uh, modern-day, uh, putting being on the foundations of ancient ones. Mexico City, you know, being where Tenochtitlan was. So, yeah, there's that, too. 4,000 prisoners of war were sacrificed to Aztec gods for over four days. So that's roughly 1,000 a day on average. Um, wow. That's just uh, that's just three zeros short of um, how many people are sacrificed to keep the god emperor alive in Warhammer 40k. What is it, a million souls a day sacrificed to keep that engine running? Uh, the Golden Throne? Anyway... Uh, 1624, four of Abel Tasman's crew were killed at Werewarhangi, uh, Murderer's Bay, by Maori. Tasman's ships depart, or Tasman, yeah, Tasman's ships depart without landing. Well, yeah, but if they didn't land, then how did they get there to, to get murdered to begin with? So that's kind of, you know, questionable, uh, writing right there. 1675, King Philip's War combined colonial militias stake massive attack against a great swamp fort owned by the Narragansetts. The, the Narragansett, the totally destroying the settlement and killing and displacing hundreds of non-combatant women and children. Yikes. Oh, yeah. Robinson Crusoe, 1687, left his island after 28 years as per Daniel Defoe's famous novel. Uh, so, uh, actually, this was a fictitious thing, I think, question mark? Was Robinson Crusoe... Hold on a second. Was uh, Robinson Crusoe's story real? Was the Robinson story real? Uh, Robinson Crusoe, thought to be based on the life of Alexander Selkirk, a Scottish castaway who lived for four years on a Pacific island called Mas Atierra, which is now part of Chile, which was renamed Robinson Crusoe Island in 19 1966. Well, all right. So it was based off of actual historical events, although embellished very greatly. Uh, so, 
um, uh, Riel Robinson, uh, how do I spell it? Crusoe, Crusoe. All right, I think I got that correctly. Uh, let's move on up here. What else do we got? 1776, Thomas Paine published the first American Crisis essay beginning with, quote, these are the times that try men's souls, end quote. The date of this is actually disputed, the actual one. But still, uh, that's very relevant to today's. These are the times that try men's souls. These really are the times that try men's souls. Good morning, Ghostry. How are you doing today? Welcome to the show. And I see you're muted as per usual, so uh, I'm, I'm going to take it as you're saying hi back. So uh, anyway, uh, moving on up, what else do we got here? 1777, Washington settled his troops at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania for the winter. And I believe this was when um, um, when the... Um, oh, okay. Well, have a good one, Miss Ghost. Um, <laughs> ghost is being a ghost. Uh, no, like uh, when the pay disputes, because... Uh, um, you know, you have to pay your soldiers, even as revolutionaries, you know, they, they need money. Um, even as, you know, soldiers fighting against the government, they still, you know, they, they need money to buy things, you know. So, um, and Valley Forge, uh, like, uh, was very historically significant. I don't know the exact semantics about it, but anyway. Moving on up to 1783, William Pitt the Younger became the youngest ever prime minister at the age of 24. Wow. 24. Well, I mean, you know, when you think about it, you know, around that time, you know, during the American Revolution, the majority of the founding fathers were in their, like, you know, early to mid-20s. Uh, some of them were a little farther along. But for the most part, they were kids, essentially. Um, I got a ping. Ghost ring. Jackalope. Yes. Ooh, that's a beautiful jackalope. Uh, ooh. Flashy. Happy face. Uh, anyway, um, 1788, Chinese troops occupied the capital Thang Long in Vietnam. All right. 1795, first state appropriation of money for road building in Kentucky. So, yeah, like actual state funds for infrastructure and whatnot. So there we go. All the way, you know, in, in Kentucky of all places. Well, look at that. 1823, Georgia passed the first U.S. state birth registration law in the U.S. All right. Um... Birth so you have to register your child. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, take a surface level scratch on this. Uh, the month in 1823, Georgia became the first state to enact a birth registration law. It required county clerks to record in a book the dates of birth of, to, of all new Georgians upon obtaining satisf satisfactory proof by way of affidavit or sworn oath. Huh. All right. So if anybody wants to read more about birth registration link down there for your potential start off point if you're not already you know jumping off on your own way um yeah we'll be down there 1828 report by u.s vice president john c calhoun defending the rights of states to nullify federal laws is presented to the south carolina legislator but took no action oh my god were they knowing about what was going to happen in the future but uh, there were, you know, uh, things later on, you know, put in, if not already put in. There is a thing, and the loon is the one who told me about this, really. Uh, it's called a convention of states. And what the states can do is they can get together and have their own votes, and then slowly, as states, strip away the powers of the federal government, which is supposed to just only be a system of checks and balances, not a freaking dictatorship. But... Somewhere along the line, the states lost the power and the feds gained it, but it needs to go back the way it was. Because, you know, we are the United States of America. We are states that are united. Not supposed to be united under, you know, an overlord, but we're united in spirit and principle in our beliefs. That's the whole point, you know? Anyway, 18... Uh, 35, the HMS Beagle with Charles Darwin aboard arrived in New Zealand. All right. And uh, I, that was in there just for Alice. And Alice is not even here. So, 1842, U.S. recognized independence of Hawaii. And that did not last long. We wanted that island so much. Like, we were just bloodthirsty for that island. The, what, what we did to, to turn that into a protectorate and then a, and then a state. You know, all the, the history of the U.S.-Hawaii involvement and relations is not a good picture. I tell you that. What we did to Kamehameha II was oof. Not good. 
Anyway, 1840, uh, we get 1843, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens was published. 6,000 copies were sold. Oh, yes. Uh, a tale as old as time. Um, well, not literally, but, uh, but yeah, no, like, um, you know, we have so many renditions of that. Uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol starring George C. Scott. Really good. You know, George C. Scott is a great actor. 1854, Alan Wilson of Connecticut patented the sewing machine to sew curving stream, or seams. All right. So curving seams. So a seam, you know, not just straight line, but if you're, like, you know, curving around or whatever. Yeah, it's a sewing machine for that. So that's pretty cool. 1859, grading started for Market Street RR in San Francisco Railroad. So, um, like, uh, or I, I think, um, I think grading, like, like, you know, like, what, uh, when steam ran uh, on the streets of San Francisco. Okay, yeah. So it was for like a train, a choo-choo train, you know. Um, and I think like you know the grade, the 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 angle, like that's what they call it, the grade, the steepness. So this is when they started. I think I'm not sure if anybody can let us a little bit more or let us know a little bit more about this semantically. Please tell us in the comment section. Anyway, 1870, after 31 days at sea in a small boat, William Hafford and three others reached the island of Kauai, Hawaii, to seek help for the shipwrecked USS Saginaw. A capsize in the breakers meant only Halford survived. Aw. So, well, at least, uh, at least they got the message out there. So, there's that. I, I wonder if the Saginaw got rescued. So, let's just, uh, quick, uh, take a look at that. The Saginaw. Um... 1870. 1870. Let's see here. USS Saginaw, the 1859 version. Uh, yeah, laid down, launched, uh, decommissioned, 1862. Okay, so recommissioned in 1863. Fate uh, wrecked in October of 1870. So, no, they didn't. Um, well, the ship didn't get saved. It got wrecked. But I wonder if the crew survived. So, uh, this was a USS uh, Saginaw. So yeah, uh, if you want to read more about that, then uh, let us know, because I don't have the time on the show to, to get into reading this and figuring out the answer to my question. we got to move on up to 1871. Albert L. Jones of New York City patented corrugated paper. Huh. I've heard that word, but I've never really known what corrugated paper is, question mark. Images. Let's see here. Oh. Oh, okay, I see. So, uh, like, um... Yeah, it's it, uh, cardboard. Cardboard, essentially. Um, the the inner workings of cardboard. Curl. Yeah. Huh. Okay. It's pretty cool. 1887. Jake Kilran and Jim Smith fight. Uh, 106 round bare knuckle draw. Wow. 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 106 bare knuckle draw. Where is that? 1871. Um. Wait a minute. Uh. Hold on a second. Uh, this is... Wait, no, that's 1887. I'm... Well, 1887, here it is. Okay, that's why I couldn't find it. I was in the wrong year. Um, I don't know how long rounds were back then, but that's a long time. And, well, um, Jake Kilrain and Jem Smith. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at that article really quick. Because that is, that is, like, insurmountable. Okay, here we go. Jen Smith, Wooly. The Wooly Bully. Oh, oh, that's just a painting of it. Oh, and so it's on, it's on auction for uh, how much is it? I just saw. It. Oh, well, the auction is in December of two thousand four, so uh, the auction's long over. <laughs> so sorry to give your hopes up accidentally. Anyway, uh, 1888, Henry Morton Stanley's expedition reached Fort Bodo in East Africa. All right, good old Henry Morton Stanley. 1889, Bishop Museum was founded in Hawaii. All right. 1899, the first black Catholic priest ordained in the U.S., Charles Uncles in Baltimore. All right. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And while that was going on, the Canadian Rugby Union formed. Okay, so if anybody's into rugby and they're Canadian, which I know some people are uh, Canadian, so out there. Uh, moving on up into the turn of the century, uh, 1900, General Horatio Kitchener offered protections to all Boers who will surrender and asked the Dutch community of Pretoria to convey this offer. Leaders in the field refused to surrender. So, all right, yeah, leading up to the Boer Wars. Bloody stuff. 
1904, Dawson City hockey team began a nine-day walk to get a boat to Seattle to catch a train to Ottawa to play in Stanley Cup in January 19th, 1905. Damn, they were going to, they were going to go make it to the game. So think about that. This is when they started their walk. They would walk for nine days to get to a boat to take that boat to catch a train. They're going to get to that game come hell or high water, you know? 1907, 239 workers died in a coal mine explosion in Jacobs Creek, Pennsylvania. Yikes. That's uh, quite a substantial amount of people dying in an explosion like that. I remember the other day we were talking about, uh, what was it, four little girls uh, going out collecting firewood, and they uh, they died in a mine explosion. But it wasn't like a, like a mine like this. It was a landmine explosion, so a different type of mine. Just still, just, uh, just watch out for mines out there. Be in a hole in the ground or a, or an IED. Just just be careful. <laughs> Nineteen ten, the first U.S. city ordinance requiring white and black residential areas in Baltimore. Hey, yeah, that's not good segregation. No, but you know at least they weren't slaves. So you I mean like you know count your blessings. Don't look at what you don't got. Look at what you got because if you look at what you don't got, then you'll never see anything else. You know, you gotta appreciate what you have because. Uh, as the song goes, nobody knows what you got until until it's gone. They pay paradise and put up a parking lot. Uh, 1910, Rayton was the first commercial or Ray, Rayon, Rayon was the first commercially produced uh, in Marcus Hook, Pennsylvania. All right, Rayon. Uh, what is Rayon? It has something to do with like uh, with lighting, right? Ray, Rayon. Um, oh wait, no. Rayon is a fiber from regenerated cellulose, generally derived from wood pulp. Rayon is usually made from eucalyptus trees, but any plant can be used, such as bamboo, soy, cotton, etc. To produce the fiber, the plant cellulose goes through a process involving a lot of chemicals, energy, and water. Alright, so for further reading of, of rayon, which is a clothing, uh, which I should have remembered. I remember uh, from um, um, Animal House. I think it was a, uh, you know, they were feeling a fabric. What is that? Is that rayon? Nice. So let's see here. Rayon. We have that link and we have this link. All right. What else do we got here? I don't need that. I don't need that. Uh, whoopsie doozles. Uh, moving on up to 1913, Jack Johnson fought fellow uh, black U.S. citizen Jim Johnson, Johnson and Johnson in the ring, to a draw in 10 rounds go away fly um, for the vacant world heavyweight boxing title in Paris. Uh, first time two black fighters competed for the title. That is really interesting. Oh, trying to kill a damn fly. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah, pretty cool. 1917, the first NHL game played on artificial ice in Toronto. Okay, so the first time an actual, like, a fake, a fake rink, go, uh, fake rink going on over there. And I want live chat, not top chat. All right. Anyway, uh, 1917, Quebec Bulldogs played their first professional hockey game. All right. And then one year later, 1918, Robert Ripley began his Believe It or Not column on the New York Globe. So they had the birth of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Well, there you go. Awesome. Believe it or not, here's Believe It or Not. Uh, 1919, um, U.S. Meteorolo or the American Meteor Meteorological Society was founded. Okay. And one year after that, we have the first U.S. indoor curling rink opened in Brookline, Massachusetts. You know, not Brooklyn, but Brookline. Not to be confused with Gotham. No, Gotham, if you ever saw the Vatham. 1920 as well, King Constantine I was restored as king of the Hellens after the death of his son, Alexander I of Greece, and a plebiscite. Huh. So his, his son and a plebiscite died. Okay, and that restored him power. Oh, okay. Uh, if anybody knows a little bit more about that, let us know in the comment sections for further education and stuff. Like, you know, let me do a service level scratch on that the entire article. Okay, here we go. Uh, after Alexander's death, Venizelos' defeat in the 1920 legislative elections and a plebiscite in favor of his return, uh, Constantine was reinstated. He abdicated the throne for the second and last time in 1922 when Greece lost the Greco-Turkish War of 1919 through 1922, and this time was succeeded by his eldest son, George II. All right, so if you want to know a little bit more of Constantine I, uh, let's see here. Constantine I of Greece. 
specifically, not to be confused of Constantine of Constantinople and all that stuff. Obviously, this guy is named after him. 1922, Theresa Vaughn, at the age of 24, confesses in court in Sheffield, England, to being married 61 times over five years in 50 cities in three countries. Holy shit. Um, all right. Uh, whatever the government did with her, she deserved it, you know? Like, like, why are you going around marrying half the world, lady? What is your problem? Leave some for the rest of the girls. Come on. 1923, King George II of Greece moved in exile to Romania while the National Assembly deliberated over future of government. All right, so, yeah, we were just talking about this. Uh, the King George II of Greece is the son of Constantine I, the brother of uh, Alexander I. So, and here we go, just one year after uh, Constantine, you know, the first abdicated his throne again to this guy. And, wow, so I'm learning all sorts of uh, history about Greece. Uh, that's pretty cool today. Uh, 1924, the last Rolls Royce. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Silver Ghost was sold in London, England. Ooh, so last Rolls Royce, Silver Ghost. Let's uh, take a look at this automobile. I want this one, actually. Here we go. So, oh, I want that car. So I just, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just lactated a little bit seeing that. Wow. Oh man, that is a beautiful automobile. I want one. This one is not bad too. Um, you know, the modern version, but oh, that looks. I have to bigger this. Hold on a second. Oh, that is that is beautiful. That is a beautiful automobile. I want one. I want one. All right. What else do we got here? 1928, the first auto gyro flight in the U.S. All right. And what is an auto gyro? Uh, let's uh, take a look at this. Uh, auto gyro or gyro play. Okay, so it's one of these. So let's see. Auto gyro 1928. Let's see if they have an image of this actually. So, okay, so one of these. Okay, so this is a, the, the one of the early iron. So this is the first flight of that. Interesting. An airplane without wings, but it's like the prototype to a helicopter. It still has a front face propeller for, you know, propulsion. Um, uh, but the top one provides lift. That's interesting. 1932, or, uh, yeah, British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, not to be confused with uh, the other form of BBC that's uh, known today, began transmitting overseas. All right. Then, 365 days later, 1933, U.S. President Roosevelt created the Electric Home and Farm Authority, EHFA, to assist low-income house uh, household uh, with purchase of major appliances. Oh, well, FDR, yeah, there we go. Like, uh, more... More liberal policies, liberal things. I mean, the, the path to hell is paved with good intentions, you know, as it's said. So, anyway, what else do we got here? 1934, Japan agrees to the Naval Treaty of 1922 and 1930. Okay, I don't really know uh, much about those. So, um, you know what, let's just, uh, let's just look up that article really quick. Let's see here. Uh, the Washington Naval Treaty. I, uh, yeah, okay, 1922. So... Um, this is, yet again, something else I have to educate myself on more, but, uh, uh, Japan Naval Treaty. Alright, so there we go. Moving on up to 1939, Russian air and ground attack uh, against Finnish positions near Suma, and I believe this is during the Winter War. Uh, let's not forget, you know, during World War II, Russia and Finland were fighting their own little war, and Finland had to join the Axis powers just to survive, so they fought alongside the Nazis as belligerents during the uh, opening um, you know, weeks of uh, Operation Barbarossa, but eventually I think Finland did have to eventually capitulate to the Soviet Union, especially when Germany themselves could really, you know, continue on defending their allies. You know, they had to come in and spend all these resources backing up uh, Italy for all these years only for Italy to be like you know what screw you we're gonna go join the people that you and I have been fighting against all these years and then Germany is like nine so uh, speaking of Germany 1941 Adolf Hitler uh, took complete command of the German army so there you go so that happened five years uh, yeah that happened two years after uh, that right there already uh, well into um, you know the US's involvement in the war um well, at least declaring war and all that stuff. Not really boots on the ground quite yet. 
Anyway, 1941 as well, the U.S. Office of Censorship was created to control info pertaining to World War II. Ooh, oh my god. Oh my god. Can you imagine if something like that happened today? If they're like, hey, we're opening the Office of Censorship. Uh, no. No, you're not. You know? You're already trying that with the, uh, with the, with the Bureau of Misinformation. You know? So, yeah. No. Yeah, <laughs> that. Oh my god. <laughs> Try if you try to try to pull that shit today. Good luck. <laughs> uh, moving on up to 1942, Robert Stroud, convicted murdered uh, murderer, uh, was transferred to Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, where he became known as the Birdman of Alcatraz. So you've all seen um, those photos of the guy with the birds and Alcatraz. Let's uh, look up a picture here really quick. That's not the tab I wanted. This is the tab I wanted. So yeah, this guy here, uh, Birdman of Alcatraz, Robert Stroud. You know, convicted murderer. And he, uh, I think he died on Alcatraz, actually. Is there a link to here? No, there's not. So let me, let me, um, Robert Stroud. Yeah, so Stroud. He died, uh, Medical Center for Federal Prisoners. So he died while still behind bars. So, well, I mean, like, you know, he was a murderer. Or a convicted murderer, at least. So, yeah. Other names, the Birdman of Alcatraz. There you go. Occupation, pimp, salesman, and ornithologist. Oh, yeah, you know, a, a bird person. That's interesting. A, a pimp and an ornithologist. Well, I guess that's, now we figured out where he got the feathers for his pimp hat. Anyway, moving on up to 1945, Austrian Republic was reestablished. Pretty cool. 46, war broke out in Indochina as Ho Chi Minh attacked French in Hanoi. All right, so there you go. Like, uh, France was once again back as a nation, uh, but they're still, like, reconstructing after, like, years of occupation and the government being in exile and all that stuff. And Ho Chi Minh, who would later become, you know, the, the president of uh, North, or eventually all of Vietnam, it was like, hey, why are we remaining as a French, you know, protectorate when they're, you know, France is weak? Let's take our land, you know, take it back. And they did. And then the U.S. got involved because we were allies, and then they had to teach us a lesson. So after uh, after the whole Korean debacle, you know, the Forgotten War, everybody was trying to forget what happened in Korea because, you know, we didn't win, we didn't lose, but, you know, it turned out to be a complete total waste of time. And so, yeah. Anyway, moving on up to 1950, Chinese invasion of Tibet forced the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, to flee Lhasa for Yadong on the Tibetan-India border. Yep. And um, what was that? Uh, what was that movie? Hold on a second. It's in my uh, movies channel right here, actually. And let me. Um, I gotta. In case my other monitor decides to die, I have to move this over here. Uh, let's see here. Movie nights. Uh, where is it? Is this it? No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Here we go. No, that's not it. I thought I found it. Why? Why can't I had it here? A little bit. Actually, no. Hold on a second. It might be in Inosh. Uh, is it in Inosh? Yes. Here we go. Kundun. Um, I strongly recommend watching Kundun. I gotta watch Kundun. Uh, but this is about the Dalai Lama and you know, during the time of Mao Zedong and everything. And I think it covers this. Uh, so yeah, brought to you by Disney of all people. You know, back when Disney actually had some integrity. No, uh, not to sound like Randy Marsh or anything, but yeah. Uh, 1950 as well. General Eisenhower was named NATO commander of the Na North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which you know, like uh, there's a whole bunch of rigmarole happening about it right now. You know, I don't want to really get into current political events, but uh, pretty sure if you don't know about it, then you're living under a rock potentially intentionally but you got to come out you know you got to know what's going on around the world if you are to survive so moving on up to 1952 queen, uh, queen juliana of the netherlands unveiled the statue docker or the dock worker memorializing the february strike of 1941 over the arrest of 450 jews for the killing of a nazi sympathizer designed by marie andesian it was relocated in 1970 from amsterdam's waterloopian market to the jonas daniel major in the square so uh statue docker dock worker huh all it needs is a t dock worker but no like dock worker statue um Oh, wow, that's not really a, a whole big thing that I thought it would be. It's just a little statue. De Dockwerke. Huh. Oh, uh, yep. Just the, the humble... The humble worker. The average man. 
you know, just, you know, clocking in, clocking out, making ends meet, making sure the family, you know, is all right. You know, and very seldomly do the common man get immortalized. But yeah, here we go. 1955, Carl Perkins recorded Blue Suede Shoes for Sun Records at Memphis Recording Service Audio. All right. I haven't heard that song in a while. Like, let me uh, let me pop it up here really quick. Blue Suede. Here we go. Blue Suede Shoes. Let's see here. Uh, I want a Carl Perkins version of it. There we go. Is that Carl? Yeah, there we go. Carl Perkins. I'm just going to... Well, this is a different song than I knew, so I'm going to keep that to watch later on. Anyway, moving on up to uh, 1957, Meredith Wilson's musical The Music Man, starring Robert Preston and Barbara Cook, opened at Majestic Theater in New York City, running for 1375 performances, or 1,375, winning five Tony Awards and a Granny Award. So pretty cool. Grammy. Not Granny. Granny Award. No, a Grammy. Like, uh, like say Granny. No, 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 say Granny. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to move on up. 1958, first radio broadcast from space. U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower Christmas message to all mankind. America's wish for peace on Earth and goodwill to men everywhere. Uh, let's, you know what? Uh, let me play that, actually. Uh, Eisenhower to all mankind. Let's see if I can. Here we go. Um. This is the President of the United States speaking. Through the marvels of scientific advance, my voice is coming to you from a satellite circling in outer space. My message is a simple one. Through this unique means, I convey to you and to all mankind America's wish for peace on Earth and goodwill toward men everywhere. You know, it just... Why does this have no likes? Okay, well, I, I guess I'm the first to like it. You know what? I'll give you a subscribe, just, just because. Um, why is there no comments? Wow. All right. Um, let, let's see here. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, just, just think about that. You know, like what you said. This was the first message from space this was the first time something came from earth went to a satellite bounced off and came back to the world oh my god eisenhower you are the goat like i don't know man i think my pres my favorite president of all time has to be eisenhower i don't know i don't know he he's He's been, in a lot of, he's been involved in a lot of shady shit, but he was a good man, I think. Like, I, I don't know. That's a... You know what? Let me put that as a, a topic for the Peanuts. Uh, was Eisenhower the best president of all time? Question mark. And let me add this video into it as well. So, because this is... This is remarkable. I, I, I want the entire article. There we go. Oh... All right, so that's now going to be in the peanut. Anyway, I'm going to leave a comment on that later on after the show. Moving on to 1959. Uh, first Liberty Bowl game, Penn State defeated Alabama 7 to none. Well, all right, yeehaw, shoopity daw. Uh, 1950 or 1960, fire aboard the USS Constellation uh, uh, under construction at Brooklyn. 50 people died. Yikes. So, while it was being built, uh, the ship caught fire. 1960, Frank Sinatra's first session with reprise records. Ring a ding a ding ding, ding a ding a ding doom. Ring a ding 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 a ding ding, ring a ding 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 a ding ding, ring a ding 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 dong. And if anybody's seen Tim and Eric's, uh, not Tim and Eric's, uh, Tom Goes to the Mayor, that's where that's from. From Tim and Eric, but a uh, different show. Uh, 1961, Indonesian President Sukarno proclaimed general mobilization for Operation Trikora in preparation for attempting to seize the Netherlands' New Guinea. So, New Guinea, uh, as we know, Papua New Guinea and all that stuff, Netherlands once had uh, laid claim to it, as said here. So, uh, interesting. They're preparing for war. 
On December 19th, no less. Huh. Well, I mean, like, you know, in, in, in the equator, equatorial states, you know, whatnot, um, like, it that does re doesn't really snow. It's not cold. So, you know, you can fight all year round over there. 1962, uh, Nia succeeded from, uh, sort of seceded from Odisha and Nia So, all right. They became their own thing. While that was going on, Transit, 5th, or Transit 5A1, the first operational navigational satellite, was launched. Okay, so the predecessor to GPS, I believe. So right there. There you go. So now it's not only the anniversary of the first, you know, satellite bounce-off transmission, but navigation, too. Well, look at that. This is a great day for space history. 1965, French President de Gaulle um, was re-elected over Francois Mitterland. I believe that was Charles de Gaulle, question mark? So uh, let me look that up here really quick. Um... Let's see, get rid of that, get rid of that, uh, get rid of that. All right. Uh, candidate, popular vote. Uh, yeah, Charles de Gaulle right there. So, yeah. Charles de Gaulle, really, another great, you know, leader. Like, he, if it wasn't for de Gaulle, like, there probably wouldn't have been a French resistance. Well, you know, there may be not, there may be one, that, that there may have been one, but, like, not nearly to the one, because he was the leader of it. Like, not only was he the leader of the, the free French, um, and all that stuff in French government in exile while uh, you know World War II and Germany was occupying and all that stuff and then of course Nietzsche France in the south and all that stuff but like he was pivotal in the success of the Normandy landings and all that whatnot like yeah I'm surprised uh, he got a lot of hate later on but hey you know like you either you either die the hero and live long enough to see yourself become the villain so as it said Moving on up to 1967, Prime Minister of Australia Harold Holt was officially presumed dead after having been swept out to sea swimming two days earlier. Yeah, so we spoke about that. Harold Holt, um, you know, known for swimming. Here we go again. Like, and now, like, with with all this Obama chef thing going on, you know, it makes me wonder. I wonder if somebody offed Harold Holt because he was known for going out and swimming often, and he just maybe a riptide got him. Not sure. Uh, anyway, 1971, Stanley Kubrick's X-rated film, A Clockwork Orange, based on the book by Anthony Burgess and starring Malcolm McDowell, premiered. And I tried to see that movie, but I, I only got up to when they were beating the homeless guy up in the gutter, and I had to turn it off. Like, it was just way too disgusting. I see that shit in the street, you know, out here in the greater L.A. area, almost on a daily basis. It's not entertainment for me. It's just life. So... I, I'm not going to watch a movie about it. <laughs> so, yeah. 1972, Apollo 17, the last of the Apollo moon landing series, returned to, uh, return to Earth. Returned to it. Uh, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean, southeast of Samoa. All right. Pretty cool. 1973, Granada adopted the Constitution. Cool, cool. And then 1974, The Man with the Golden Gun, the ninth James Bond film, starring Roger Moore, Bert uh, Eklund, and Christopher Lee, premiered in London. All right. That's when the Golden Gun came out. The man with the Golden Gun. 1974 as well, Nelson Rockefeller was sworn in as the Vice President of the United States. That's a little suspicious. The Rockefeller family uh, having a uh, lot to do with the, uh, you know, back alley dealings behind closed door, you know, around the corner acts of the government, military, industrial complex, you know, whatnot. Yeah. 1976, a Piper Cherokee plane crashed into uh, Baltimore Memorial Stadium upper stands 10 minutes after the, Col the Colts lost to uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers 40-14. to No one was seriously hurt, so that's good. So uh, nobody was seriously hurt, so wow, that's terrifying. Can you imagine, like, you're out there on a, you know, watching a football game or whatever, and all of a sudden a freaking aircraft falls on your head? It's like, jeez, man, that is... That's some pretty scary stuff right there. Uh, yeah, well, here's color picture. You know what? Is there a video of this? Let me look this up here. So, uh, Memorial Stadium crash. Is there an actual video of the crash? Or is this just about it? Yeah, I just see still images. Okay, this is just about it. So it doesn't look like there might be videos of that crash. Uh, anyway, uh, 1978... Uh, where are we? Here we go. Uh, Indira Gandhi was arrested on corruption charges in India. Huh. And she was not related to Mahatma, I don't believe. Um, let me let me double check that. 
uh, generation. Yeah, she was assassinated. Uh, she was uh, a speaker of, of peace and whatnot. Uh, uh, Indira Gandhi. Um, Mahanama? Uh, Mahanama Gandhi. Let's see here. Were they related? I don't think. Indira Gandhi related Mahanama Gandhi. Are Muhammad and Indira are really in a conversation of fans? Not really. Okay, so they're not. Uh, so the prominent uh, Gandhi family is not related to Mahatma Gandhi. So Mahatma Gandhi is different than the political uh, movers and shakers and such. But yeah, pretty interesting. So so Mahatma was the outlier, not Indira. So I, you know, but he was the more famous one. Moving on up to, uh, we got that one. Uh, we got, uh, yeah, 1980. Anguilla became a British dependency separate from St. Kitts. Okay, whatever that means. Uh, while that was going on, Iran requested $24 billion in U.S. guarantees to free hostages. Huh. Okay. One year later, uh, 1981, Romulan Sposowski, Polish ambassador to the United States, defected to show support for the Solidarity Movement amid a crackdown. Yeah, you know, like, if, if things are going to change, people need to make these really, really tough decisions, you know? Are you going to stand by your principles? Are you going to stand by your family? Are you going to stand by your money, by your job? You know, at the end of the day, everything you cherish, no matter how much you bundle what with what, everything is separate, you know? Unfortunately, and, you know, sometimes you really, you got to take a stand in one thing and, 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 you know, condemn something else. You know, not really condemn, but just like, you know, let it go. Be like, hey, I'll get to you when I get to you. But, you know, really, you know, really tough, tough world out there. You know, like uh, relentless, unyielding. And, uh, you know, times like today, you know, especially we got to we really got to hold our cards close to our chest and make some very prudent moves. Because once you move a piece on the chessboard, you can't take it back. So, yeah. Uh, moving on up to 1983, the original FIFA World Cup trophy, the Julius Rimet Trophy, was stolen from the headquarters of the Brazilian Football Confederation in Rio de Janeiro. Yikes. That's not good. They need to up their security there. Getting trophies stolen and whatnot. 1984, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, no, I think I've already passed it here. Here we go. 33 unknown Bach keyboard works were found in the Yale Library. Huh. All right. We also have 1984, uh, Chinese Premier Zhao Jing and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher signed the Shino, the, the Shino British Joint Declaration to transfer Hong Kong back to China in 1997. We have all these 1984s. Where's, where's Alice? Like, uh, you know, th th this is all her stuff right here. Uh, especially this one, 1984. Oh my god, this is an, uh, an Alice article if there ever was one. Scotty Bowman won his 691st regular season game, the most wins by any coach in an NHL history, or in the National Hockey League history. Yeah, Alice, where are you? Come on. I'm taking your articles. Oh, God! 84 as well. Wayne Gretzky, at the age of 23, was the 18th and youngest NHLer to score 1,000 points. I am just scooping Alice's stuff right out from underneath her. Like, good Lord. It's, it's her birth year, it's her hockey stuff, it's Wayne Gretzky, it's Scotty Bowman, like, oh my god, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send her a DM right, actually, hold on a second, I'm gonna send her a text right now, you know, give me a second, I need a, I need a text her, like, war queef, here we go. Yo, Alice, comma, you're missing out on the most Alice of Alice sections to ever Alice on the History Show. I'm covering multiple 1984 articles. And some of them are about NHL, Scotty Bowman, Wayne Gretzky. Oh my God, you are missing out, you poor girl. Actually, you poor lady. All right, text to send it. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Moving on up to 1985, Mary uh, Lund was the first woman to receive a Jarvik 7 artificial heart at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis. Okay. Fake hearts. Cool, cool. 1986 Platoon, directed by Oliver Stone, starring Charlie Sheen, Tom Berenger, and William Dafoe, uh, not to be confused with William DeFriendly, uh, was released. Academy Awards Best Picture and Best Director. Really good, uh, you know, Platoon, the, the, with the cover. Ah, like that's when he's getting fragged and whatnot. 
1986, Jack Morris agreed to salary arbitration with former team Tigers and accused owners of collusion against free agency. Uh, that's, um, okay, pretty accusatory statements right there. Uh, I have no idea about baseball stuff, so, I, you know, I, I wish I could understand the significance of that. Uh, 1986, Michael Sergio, who parachuted into Shea Stadium during Game 6 of the World Series, was sentenced to 100 hours of community service and fined $500. Or five hundred dollars zero zero, so yeah. Oh hey, look, maybe look. Still got him. Um, but yeah, uh, don't go pulling stunts out there, you know. Uh, while that was happening, the USSR freed dissident Andrei Shakarov from internal exile. How could you be internally exiled? That kind of contradicts itself. To exile is to remove. You can't remove while holding. It's like I condemn this lighter to noggin exile. So, you know, eternal dog in exile. Exile it from my head, but it's resting atop of it. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, 1987, NHL Boston Bruins. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Uh, Boston Bruins, Ken Lindsman, and, and St. Louis Blues, Doug Gilmore, set a record for the fastest two goals in league history, scoring two seconds apart. Another Alice article, as Alice texts me, I joined, but I have to do GNC training. That's due to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, but I just read about um, the fastest two goals in league history scoring two seconds apart. Another NHL thing in 1987. There you go. 1988, NASA unveiled plans for a lunar colony and manned missions to Mars. Okay, well, we're waiting. Yeah, but we're, we're getting back there. Like, look at the Artemis mission. As early as next year or even 2025... Uh, we will be having another man on the moon as the plan currently stands. 1988 as well, Oklahoma's college football team got three-year probation. What did they do? And I wonder if they'll ever get double secret probation. Dun, 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 dun. We also have an unexploded World War II bomb was found in Frankfurt, Germany. About 5,000 people were evacuated. Well, yeah, you know, it's a bomb from wartime. And one year later, 1989, uh, American Airlines pur purchased Eastern Airlines' Latin American route. Huh. All right. I just don't fucking like I'm going to call my regional right now. Oh, I will. <laughs> and 1989, Larry Bird of the Celtics uh, began NBA free throw streak of 71 games. All right. That's pretty cool. Um, where Where is that? Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm already... I'm, it's hard. I can't split my eyes. I'm not a chameleon. You know, like, I have two things I'm trying to pay attention to at the same time. 1991 as well, the 6,000th episode, episode of One Life to Live. Oh, I've got one life to live. No. 6,000th episode, though. Pretty cool. We also have Boris Yeltsin to control of the Kremlin. All right. Not to be confused with Boris Johnson. So, yeah. <laughs> And then also in 1991, New York Yankee pitcher Steve Howe was arrested for cocaine possession. Yikes. Um, yeah, you know, I don't care who you are. If you're doing uh, hard uh, narcotics and stuff like that, uh, you know, you need to... You shouldn't be arrested, really. But, you know, you should get, you know, treatment and help you that you need and whatnot. Anyway, 1992, Robert Wilson, Tom Waits, and Kathleen Brimmons' event guard opera Alice. Oh, Alice! Another one, where are you? Based on the life and, uh, and work of Lewis Carroll, premiered at the Thalias Theater, Hamburg, Germany. You know what? I'm going to read this to her. In 1992, Robert Wilson, Tom Waits, and Kathleen Brennan's event guard opera Alice, based on the life and work of Lewis Carroll, premiered at the Thalia Theater, Hamburg, Germany. Today is an analyst episode if there ever was one, and you are just missing out and missing out and missing out. Oh, uh, poor Alice. <laughs> what was I? And you know I'm doing all this to tease you and give you a hard time. Anyway, 1993, Marsha Norman, Bob Merrill, and Julie, uh, Jules Stein's fairy tale musical Red Shoes, directed by Stanley Donen, closed at Gershwin Theater in New York City after five performances, lost nearly eight million dollars. Now that's a that's a little you know thing about you know the plays. You know they cost money. And this is the first time I never really thought about that. Um, and this was 93, so I'm, once again, I'm ahead of myself. 
like you know we, there's a lot of articles you know about uh plays you know a lot of them uh, are just you know whatever oh 393 performances you know yada yada i only cover the ones that are a thousand plus or that are very small so like the opening and closing at the same night or the small one person show a uh, peg from Peggy Lee or whatever her name was, and it, it was only ran for like six performances or whatever. How much money did it cost? How much money did they make? Did they make a profit? Or did they make a loss at the thing? And right here, this one, uh, it only did five performances and lost nearly $8 million. So yeah, that was uh, very much in the red right there. 1994, Rolls-Royce announced it's the future cars will feature V12 engine, which will produ be produced by BMW, a.k.a. Uh, bring money in wads or break my windows, according to uh, the father of um, one of my old high school friends, a really tall, you know, Swedish Norwegian descendant guy I call the Thons, A. Hey! So... 1998, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to impeach President Bill Clinton over the Lewinsky scandal, forwarding the articles of impeachment to the Senate for a trial. Huh. All right. And then in the year 2000, in the year 2000, uh, the Leninist guerrilla units using the Communist Labor Party of Turkey Leninist attack a nationalist movement party uh, office in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, killing one person and injuring three. Leninists in 2000. Wow. Uh, almost 100 years. That's terrifying. 2001. The Fellowship of the Ring, the first Lord of the Rings film, was released, made 47 million US dollars in the opening weekend and 871 million total worldwide. Hell yeah. Really great uh, movie. Really good book. I have yet to read it. So, 2001. A record high barometric pressure of 1085.6 HPA or 32.06 INHG uh, was recorded in Tosinacel, Korojongsil province in Mongolia. Okay, barometric pressure. What is what is barometric pressure? Actually, let's look that up here really quick. Um, let's see here. Barometric pressure, atmospheric pressure. Um, it is the measurement of air pressure in the atmosphere, specifically the measurement of the weight exerted by air molecules at a given point on Earth. Barometric pressure changes constantly and is always different depending on where the reading takes place. So, if you want to learn more about barometric pressure, uh, I have uh, two links here actually to start your educational advancement pursuits. So, barometric pressure. Pressure. Though, I want an equal, not a, a hyphen. Blah! I, why can't I do things? Let's see here. All right. Uh, moving on up. Uh, 2001, as well, the Argentine economic crisis, December 2001 riots. Riots erupted in Buenos Aires after Domenico Cavallo's Correlato measured restrictive withdrawal of cash from bank deposits. Whoa. Huh. All right. So, uh, dictating uh, money flow and whatnot. Not good. I want to go back to this barometric thing. You know, So this is like the, the, the highest on record, at least 2001. I'm not sure if it's since been broken but so that's basically the thickest air so essentially think of air as water but you can breathe it and like this so it's like the highest pressure you know in the air anyway 2004 this is not the uh, tab i wanted world's largest indoor water park tropical islands resort opened in the arium an old airship hangar in the world's largest freestanding hall south of berlin germany Tropical Islands Resort. I think I've looked this up here, but let, let's check this out here. Tropical Islands Resort. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big airship hangar. You know, huge. These are massive things. And it makes, it makes you know, the park look so small. But, you know, I'd like to go check this out. An entire, can you imagine an entire amusement park inside of a building? They have buildings inside of the building. Look at that. They have pavilions inside of a pavilion. They have an ocean inside of a building! <laughs> it's madness how big that building is. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, let me, you know, let me, let me just open this. This is, like, you know, like this, these are, d d you have a village inside of a building. Inside of a building! You know? Like, I mean, this is, this is like something straight out of, uh, out of, um, uh, the fucking movie with uh, the Canadian guy. Uh, I don't want to say it's not Truman. 
The Truman Show. There we go. I knew it started with a T. Like, could you imagine? Like, you know, the entire pavilion, entire buildings, domes, rides, you know, a pagoda, you know, like all inside, you know, made look like a freaking, you know, this looks like a model, but it's not. This is an interior photograph. That is insane. Uh, anyway, moving on up to 2007, the Lakota people, a Native American tribe, proclaimed independence and withdrew all of their treaties with the United States, established the Rep Republic of Lakota as a separate country. All right, so we really do have a Republic of Lakota. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's take a look at this here really quick. Republic of Lakota. Yeah, so right here, we were talking about this just uh, just yesterday, question mark? Yeah, we did do a show yesterday. So yeah, so if you're in this area, uh, as far as the Lakota tribe is concerned, you're in their sovereign territory, not in the United States. But unfortunately, that's not how the rest of the world works. But, you know, cool, uh, Lakota people. Um, you know, you have your own country, kind of technically, in your eyes. So, uh. Moving on up to 2009, former Welsh and Lions uh, cap captain Gareth Thomas it was the first international rugby player to reveal he is gay. Okay. All right. Uh, 2010, miracle at the New Meadowlands, Philadelphia Eagles trail New York Giants by 21 points with eight minutes to play before scoring four touchdowns in final seven minutes, including dramatic walk-off punts returned for a touchdown by uh, Descend Jackson. Huh. All right. Then 2012, Park Yoon Hui won the South Korean presidential election to become the nation's first female president. And didn't she do like a bunch of corrupt shit and like, you know, not... Subsequently, she was sentenced to 24 years in prison with her now residing in the Seoul Detention Center. Well, that didn't end well, um, you know, and it really puts a stink eye on, you know, uh, women in positions of power. Like, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of people out there who legitimately hate, you know, things that are not them. You know, like, there's there's actual racists, there's actual tribalists, there's actual sexists and everything. And when, when bitches like this come and fuck things up for everybody else, you know, you're only giving the bad people ammo, valid, you know, validly. And I hate that. So, pardon me. If you're a woman and you're seeking any position of power, don't, be, don't fuck up. Because you have the rest of your entire gender behind you looking at you as a role model and you know all the men looking at you as whether or not you know they want to vote another woman you know that's that's how it is that's you know, that's obviously not how i roll but you know you, you gotta you gotta be careful you know when you're when you're a, a minority representative you gotta you gotta you know gotta cover your butt so and do things right you know anyway uh, where are we? Uh, 2012, US, uh, a UBS bank was fined $1.5 billion for its role in manipulating the LIBOR rate. Huh. What is a LIBOR rate? Hold on a second. What is a LIBOR rate? Search. Um, what is current library what is library okay what is library mean in finance london interbank offered rate oh sorry i had to blow my nose anyway uh so yeah it's the london interbank offered rate so the ubs bank was discovered that they were manipulating this library rate they are fined $1.5 billion. Good. Um, finally, you know, finding things of substantial numbers, although I'm not sure how much uh, that was in, in comparison to their overall uh, GDP, question mark. Not entirely sure. And I'm about to sneeze again, so give me one moment. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, let's move on up here. Uh, 2013, 81 people were injured uh, after part of the ceiling caved in at London's Apollo Theater. Yikes. So once again, you know, talking about, like, you know, you go to the market, you go to the theater, you go to somewhere, you know, and uh, something, some disaster catastrophe happens, you know, not good stuff. 2014, Craig Ferguson's final appearance as host of The Late Late Show on CBS after 2058 episodes. All right, that's one-third of the way of that 
other thing that we spoke about was 6,000 episodes. So, wherever the hell it was. Uh, 2013 as well, 81. Oh, wait, we got that one. We got that one. Uh, 2014 as well. The Guardian newspaper called 2014 the year the people stood up. Yeah, well, it didn't stand up for long. And we got turned around. And, well, you know, all confused and kerfuffled and discombobulated. 2016, at least 48 people died after drinking back, bath lotion at uh, Irkutsk, Siberia, thinking it contained alcohol. Why are you drinking soap? Why would soap contain alcohol? I mean, well, uh, I mean that would make sense for cleanliness and everything, but then, like, you know, it dries out your skin like a mother. So, and I'm about to sneeze yet again. I don't know what's going on, but it's, it's really dry out here in SoCal. So, like, I'm getting all this dust and everything and allergies. So, give me a minute. No, oh, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Like, just how I got, I'm going to start taking Claritin in the morning. I'm going to add that to my repertoire. 2016 as well as well. Russian ambassador to Turkey was shot dead at an art gallery in Ankara by Turkish gunmen. Yikes! Yikes! Oh, well, you know, just an ambassador just out looking at art and getting shot. You know, just political division. Like, all this crazy stuff happening in the world. We also have U.S. Electoral College voted 304 to 227 to nominate Donald Trump for president over the objections of seven faceless electors. Faithless, not faceless. Faithless electors. So, all right, take uh, take what that is you will. I, I'm not getting involved in all that political crap. You know, it's just, that's what it is. It's just crap. It's just all it is is dividing, you know, d uh, divide and conquer, you know. And everybody flocking to Trump, you know, like, all you're doing is 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 being a good little sheep and following the idol controlled by the state, you know. So, anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, what else do we got? 2018 drones flying over Gatwick Airport, England, caused delays and cancellations for 800 flights and 110,000 people. Wow, wow. So yeah, this is uh, you know drones like there was a a, a huge like thing for a while like uh, the FAA like how, how do you control drones like and now they actually have anti-drone drones uh, they have drones with nets and actually let's see if I can find it anti uh, drone there we go I can't type for shit oh so yeah so yeah right here they have they have drones flying around with nets to capture other drones they have uh, like um freaking turrets like that shoot at them and everything uh, look at that they have drones that fly through other drones yeah anti-drone aerial ram wow huh look at that anti-drone death ray <laughs> so wow there's, there's an entire industry like of anti-drone technology this is insane that's crazy huh, I did not know it went that deep 2018 as well, first use of a drone to deliver vaccines to the island of Aramango, Venetu by UNICEF. I hope this wasn't the, the same drones flying over the uh, airport. No, this is completely somewhere else. But wow, yeah, yeah, you know, more drone technology using drones to deliver, you know, medications and whatnot you know, to, to areas like the, the modern day uh, supply drops. What, uh, yeah. We also have a 2018 U.S. President Donald Trump announced victory over the Islamic State in planned withdrawal of U.S. troops from Syria. Okay. 2019, earliest fossilized trees, 386 million years old, found at a quarry in Cairo, New York. Study, study was published in Current Biology. Huh. Then, moving on up to 2021, just two years ago, former student activist Gabriel Boric wins Chile's presidential election to become the country's youngest president at 35 years of age. Nice. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a little... Uh, Cheer for you. There you go. Have have some claps. You know, oh, have, have applause. Don't, don't don't have some claps. Have some applause. 2022. 190 countries agreed to protect 30 percent of world's land and oceans by 2030, and other measures to halt declining global biodiversity at the UN Biodiversity Conference in Montreal. We are not God. You know, sure, we can do things to stem our own impact, but we got to stop thinking that we can do things and take nature into our own hands. Back off, you know, humanity. Back off. 
And last but not least, 2022. Uh, oh, wait, hold on a second. This is today. So uh, I'm going to. 2022, uh, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root formally apologized for the slave trade on behalf of the Dutch state in a speech at the National Archives in The Hague. All right, and when will you know who apologized for killing Jesus? So when are we going to get our, you know, oh, we're sorries. You know, everybody else is getting their sorries. When, when, when's the Christians going to get theirs? So I'm just saying, like, and then we have right here, this is not really history. This is more like news. Uh, so because this actually happened today, today. So I got to add this into the script right now. One, two, three, four. Uh, a 2023. Uh... Science, the magazine Science, uh, named anti-obesity medications that mimics the hormone GLP-1 containing semaglutide or ozempic wegovi and tyrosipatine or monjaro, their breakthrough of the year. All right, so we have, you know, some history, you know, as it said, uh, made every day. Uh, so the hug, uh, yeah, history made every day. Uh, so, right there. And that shall conclude the show. Once again, please check the under in the description below for any links you may find interesting, uh, including but limited to all things on the Coalition. We're not just here on Rumble. We're not just on YouTube. We're also on BitChute, and we are on Odyssey, and we do have presences in other places that we don't really use, though. But anyway, yeah, go check out our link tree. And the Odyssey link, link tree is censoring Odyssey, so that's why in the, uh, in the description we also have the all of our... Uh, uh, video sharing streaming platforms down there as well. Anyway, uh, for all of you, uh, for your dose of fast events daily, we stream almost every day at 11 in the morning Pacific time, which is 12 noon mountain, 1 central, and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, respectively. Here's some little rhymes to help you during the times. If you're on the West Coast, it's 11 to 3, all for the mountain, 12 and 4, watch us for more. Pardon me, Central 1 and 5 for the contrived, and East 2 and 6 for your fix. And the second times are, of course, for these shows that we do, other than the history show. So, you know, we do a new show, the uh, the Omni Coalition new show. Talk this every uh, phrase day at 3. We have the peanut every Sun's day at 3. Everything's actually at 3 now, so I gotta change this around here. Uh, the, uh, the Edge of Disclosure uh, at 3, and then we have other things that are not really scheduled, not really live shows and all that stuff, so, yeah. And I say all that because until you, uh, yeah, uh, until you catch us next time, you know, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles!